anyway now let us let us start with the topic and the topic is the critic as artist by oscar wilde okay and this is the first topic this is the first topic of uh, literary criticism the critic as a as artist is written a dialogue between two friends arnest and gilbert and based on two acts generally arnest asks quest asks questions of gilbert thus gilbert seems wild <coughs> spoke person for philosophy of criticism arnest also summarizes what gilbert has said proving himself a crucial tool for getting across wild ideas as well so now see that uh, uh, these are the dialogues between two characters and these two characters are certainly going to discuss the topic over here gilbert is uh, oscar wilde's spokesperson for what for philosophy of criticism as far as the criticism itself is concerned we know very well are we are very much aware of the definition of criticism generally all of you are certainly students of uh, literature and uh, uh, you have also studied criticism in your previous semesters so criticism does not mean only to find faults from the works of others but it also means that to aid something that lacks in the works of writers so you it's so you should you should first of all keep in your minds that criticism does not mean that simply to find faults from the works of others but it also means over here that how to bring certain changes in the work of the writers in order to make it quite impressive Oscar Wilde Oscar Wilde certainly has written this in response to Matthew Arnold when i say matthew arnold and all of you are certainly well known to name of matthew arnold matthew arnold is very much popular critic writer poet of his time and he belongs to the age of materialism so that's why he has to write culture and anarchy through culture and anarchy he tried his level best to bring forth the importance of values to to the people who were deeply immersed into material world even they put aside religion so in the first chapter of culture and anarchy sweetness and light he he awakened the people from the long slumbers of materialism and this is the one of the greatest contribution of matthew arnold to verse literature so we should keep in mind matthew arnold and this essay 
the critic as artist Oscar Wilde also wrote in response to Matthew Arnold's essay the function of criticism at present time what is the function of criticism that this idea was put forward by Matthew Arnold and Oscar Wilde certainly tried his level best to not uh, go against the basic idea of Matthew Arnold, but he added certain new things or new ideas into it. Matthew Arnold holds that it is a function of criticism to see the object as in itself it really is. Overall, it means that Matthew Arnold is of the view that critics should see the object only. It means that critic must be objective. He must be he must be uh, confined towards the object and he may avoid to aid more ideas into it. Where at this point, especially Oscar Wilde went against him. And Oscar Wilde is of the view that critics should be subjective. Critics should be subjective. And Oscar Wilde calls critic as artist. Artist means that he must be in a position to make the work of art that has been, sorry, that has been put forward by the writer. Now, please uh, mute the uh, mic. Please mute the mic. Whoever uh, is it, or whoever it may be. Now, see that. Now, see, this is not a good thing that uh, means you are not going to <coughs> follow and uh, uh, all these sounds are coming over here. Now, see, overall, overall, Oscar Wilde holds the critic in high regards as an artist in his own right. He uses the work of artists as they, in turn, have used the material world as a point from which to jump into creation something wholly new. It means that certainly <coughs> all those poets and artists belong to this material world. But from this material world, artists are certainly those who may jump into the world of ideas. World of ideas, world of imagination. So uh, they are not only artists are not only confined to to means this material world. They jump into ideal world and come up with new ideas. He and critic seems to anticipate readers' response criticism when he states that artwork is not expressive but impressive. Now, artists certainly make the work of others impressive. Impressive means that you may be very much moved when you go through the work of art. So Oscar Wilde is of the view that the function of criticism 
is purely subjective and seeks to reveal its own secret and not the secret of others. So criticism for Wilde has no interest in discovering the true intentions of the artist. Now see, true intention of the artist means that you know, uh, we, we, being a human being, have two aspects. Number one, as a personal and as a professional. Suppose, okay, as far as the personal likes, dislikes, and uh, having uh, relations with people <coughs> are having uh, are being in harmony with your friends okay and not in harmony with your foes that is something else okay so this is your personal life but as far as your professional life is concerned then being a student of literature you may you may be or you must be a knowledgeable person and your outlook appearance must be different from your being personal. Suppose there, there is certainly uh, the difference of natures and difference of outlooks in the world. When we will discuss Sigmund Fred in this course, then certainly uh, means uh, you will not agree to him. That is something else. But as far as the work of art is concerned, as, as far as, as his writings are concerned, then you will certainly appreciate. For example, uh, I think that you have not gone through Bacon as his otherwise. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, in Bacon, Bacon is called the wisest and meanest type of mankind. Okay, and try your uh, and try to understand this wisest and meanest. As far as essays are concerned, you will certainly find him at the highest place in the world of literature because of his wisdom. So that's why he is called wisest of men. But as far as his personal life is concerned, you will find the meanest type of mankind because. He was the man of low character and he was never sincere to anyone else. Right? So here it means that whenever critic uh, means go through any work that the writer's intention must not be before him. Or he is not bound to find out uh, writer's intentions. But the focus of attention should be or his focus, focus of attention should be his own, his, uh, uh, the work through which he is going. So this was, these, these were the chief points, right? And if any critic simply uh, tries to find out intention or the aim of art is this, it will be, it will be shallow and devious. But Oscar Wilde is of the view that you, Oscar Wilde also means put forward that artwork must be must be a ground or base for the readers that upon which readers may see the soul of their own. Soul of their own, oh here me, oh here means that suppose, suppose you have gone through the poetry. And certainly, uh, all of you might have uh, enjoyed it. Why we are very much inclined to poetry? Why do we like it? We like it because because all the word words certainly carry 
emotions and feelings of poet and we know very well that emotions and feelings always emanates from heart of man and and though the same feeling certainly appeal to heart of another person so that's why the poetry emanates from heart and then it appeals to other heart the same uh, nearly is the case over here that we that oscar wilde is of the view that the work of art must be such of the highest level that when you go through it you may find your own soul in it Arnold, Matthew Arnold maintains that criticism lays the philosophical grounds upon which art is built. Certainly, criticism is the philosophical back, uh, ground or the philosophical uh, type of base upon which the work of art is built. Wilde suggests there have been critical edges that have not been created in the ordinary sense of the word. But here, Oscar Wilde disagrees to that all the edges are not same, and there are edges. There were edges certainly in which, in which, uh, art could not flourish. Why? Because why? Because when people were very much inclined towards. material gains and those edges in which the spirit of man has sought to seek sought to sit in order the treasure of treasure house it means that uh, spirit of man was certainly uh, behind the material gains it is in fact to this fact that arnold sets about writing his essay to begin with it means that he has presented our oscar wilde has presented all the age of matthew arnold why because matthew uh, during the uh, means age uh, people uh, didn't pay any attention so overall oscar wilde draws our attention towards uh, towards the age of matthew arnold and the same age was certainly full of uh, chaos and confusion how for example if people are in, uh, people are uh, only running behind the material gains what will happen or for example if we put a glance on our society what is happening now where are the values how many people do you know uh, who are who are uh, means uh, in search of uh, almighty allah or who are in search of uh, uh, means uh, spiritual world or who are very much sympathetic to you or uh, who uh, always give the importance to values of life or those people where are those people who may be source of consolation to you where are those people who may ask you about your problems and issues how many people do you know for and and it was it was yesterday simply yesterday then uh, means uh, nearly uh, people were dying because of food and uh, they were locked down and uh, and uh, there was no any suitable arrangement for them and uh, babies and babies went without uh, means uh, milk and uh, people uh, slept without food and etc all that happened over here and when all the factories of of uh, the city city uh, were closed and uh, people were certainly asked to leave the factories and and they they were unemployed and there was no any proper arrangement of food for them 
So now see that in such type of situation, when fundamental needs of life such as food, water, shelter, clothes are not available, or when you don't have such type of things, that how how you will be able to uh, think about uh, think about a spiritual world and the spirit of man and the values and etc. So same, 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 and uh, the case was not quite same um, with the age of Matthew or not, but overall, uh, literary or uh, means uh, condition of England, our condition of uh, means Europe was not quite good. Why? Because all of you being students of literature uh, know very well about the history and then and uh, when man got industrial revolution, then what had happened to them? And then industrial revolution and other things and etc. And till today, uh, we even uh, by living in the age of uh, uh, means uh, uh, this digital world, uh, uh, people are devoid of uh, uh, all these values. So, Oscar Wilde is of the view that during the days of uh, Matthew Arnold, certainly such type of things were not given importance. So there have been critical edges that have not been created. So in such type of times, um, means uh, uh, creativity uh, lacked over here, our creativity did, uh, means uh, didn't uh, he sees a certain deficiency in the age from which he writes. A deficiency which he believes what makes the creation of any true impossible, the absence in Arnold's England of the national glow of life and thought, which maps epoch, epochs of a great art possible. Achha. Great art possible leaves contemporary at wanting materials and basis, which might allow it. The, a thorough interpretation of the world. So here he has highlighted faults and follies of the age of Matthew Arnold. That there was no any national glow of life and thought. National glow means certainly uh, when whole the nation is certainly uh, running behind uh, all these uh, means things of the lowest level, and then uh, where where uh, anyone can find national glow and thought. So the whole the age was material. And based on materialism. And that was the thorough interpretation of the world. It is a function of Arnold's proposed turn to criticism to create such an era of inquiry. Oscar Wilde agrees, stating that there has been a creative age that has not also been a critical age. So, whenever there is no any creativity, there, as a result, there is uh, there is no any uh, means uh, criticism. So, so criticism simply comes with creativity. So so uh, means uh, in this way, in this way, Oscar Wilde tries his level best to go, uh, to to prove that the age of Matthew Arnold was certainly not quite satisfactory time in England, number one. And number two, and he has also highlighted the point that Matthew Arnold certainly was, was of the view that the object 
must be given importance. Whereas Oscar Wilde tries his level best to prove that subject is most important. Arnold still holds that free creativity, free creative activity found in a great art to be the highest function of man. And so seems to position criticism in somewhat lesser, albeit equally necessary pursuit. While sees such a distinction, indeed the very little of work suggests as much. The critic does not stand in relation to the artist, but rather becomes an artist himself as he experiences and interprets the art of others. So, critic does not mean that the common man. Are the, over here, Oscar Wilde tries to make us understand that the level of critic must be the highest one. Now, see, let me to admit, I think that there are two students are waiting. Oh, my God. This is Galaxy J4. Who is she? Tazin Fatma. Okay. Tazin Fatma has joined. And who is there along with Tazin Fatma? Ruby, please, uh, you may, you may uh, mute your... Uh, and who is Galaxy 4? Yes, what is your name? What is your name? Please, you have raised it. Uh, you have raised it. It means, sir, Sarika Nakwal. Sarika Nakwal. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Okay. So now see that we, uh, while sees no such distinction. So uh, the point of discussion over here is that the artists are the Kiltic. Why? Because Kiltic is the man of the highest caliber in the eyes of Oscar Wilde. So Oscar Wilde is of the view that Kiltic is an artist. So he must possess the highest position. It means that in knowledge in all these things that he may be able to, he may be able to check the work of art. Right? And whenever, or if he feels it essential that he may aid something new, he may aid something new in the work of art or the work of other writers or poets or whatever. For what? In order to make it quite impressive, impressive or attractive. So this is, this is, so that's why Oscar Wilde holds uh, art, uh, critic as an artist are the men of the highest uh, caliber. For while criticism in its highest form is more creative than creation because it relates not to the world but to one's soul in the sense. Criticism becomes a more pure realization of Hegel's self-conscience self-consciousness while uh, wild holds to be essential to the creation of true art okay so now see that criticism criticism means that the critic must be more creative than the creation then the creation means the work of art and Criticism becomes more pure realization of Hegel's self-consciousness while holds while uh, wild holds to be essential to the creation of true art. It means that uh, criticism is necessary for true art are essential to the creation of true art. While even goes so far at times and to somewhat humorously. De denigrate the artist function. 
of authors, for example, he says, anybody can write a three-volumed novel. Now, see, here is an example that how uh, Kirch, Kirchik is an artist and how he uh, come up with the new ideas after, after going through any work of art or any creation. So here he gives example. For example, he says, anybody can write a three volume novel. Any person or even uh, Komal can write, Sarika can write, Huda can write, and others can write, uh, uh, means uh, novel of three volumes are uh, novel. Okay, any person can write it. It merely requires a complete ignorance of both life and literature. Suppose ke, if you are unable to represent all the society and if your novel lacks now, both life and literature, and he attributes to the Mona Lisa the possibility that the Da Vinci was merely the slave of an archaic smile. Now, he has given uh, over here the example of Mona Lisa and that uh, she, uh, that uh, Da Vinci was slave of smile of Mona Lisa. So, suppose ke if you are going to produce any piece of literature, that you can do it. But when it will be presented to a critic who is an artist. Then certainly he will he will add something and new uh, which lacks. Or suppose, ke, for example, uh, means it is it is a, certainly a difficult type of task to write anything. But if you produce for once, then you always try to get it checked by someone else in order to get satisfaction. And when uh, you may get views of some others, uh, then you, you are very much satisfied and uh, you also become very uh, set, happy and satisfied. And you, and uh, it also uh, uh, make you in, uh, very much uh, satisfied and uh, competent more that you can write this thing, or you you uh, can and do something at least. Wise concept of beauty echoes and revises that of Kant. Kant asserts that the beauty is a symbol of the morally good. If you can recall in your memories that uh, beauty is certainly uh, the term, not a word. And uh, we have discussed it a lot in our classes. So here we have the definition of beauty. Beauty equals and revises that of Kant. Kant asserts that the beauty is a symbol of morally good. Those people who are morally good, they are beautiful. Wilde parallels the sentence of Kant when he claims that beauty is a symbol of symbols. Certainly the uh, basic ideas, uh, idea was put forward by Kant for the definition of beauty. What beauty is? The beauty is, beauty is a symbol of, it is a symbol. Symbol of what? Symbol of those people who are morally good. They are called beautiful, beautiful, but Oscar Wilde puts forward or goes or went a step further when he says that beauty is the symbol of symbols. Falcon establishing subjective universality of beauty was essential. Beauty must be universal, universal. It must be accepted ev everywhere throughout the world. Suppose ke if your piece of work is attractive or when you get certain views or the positive views or appreciation 
from the critics in the one cor- in one corner of the world that you may have the same views of the other critics in the other corners of the world it means that it has a universal appeal so universal appeal of beauty is, is essential and he went to great length to eliminate all interests from the aesthetic judgment of an artwork in kant's aesthetic aesthetic beauty must have no purpose and all judgment of beauty lies within the person who is judging so here uh, these are the uh, different words through which beauty has been uh, explained so the same thing as you know very well beauty lies in the eyes in the eye of beholder same as the thing word thing word our same idea is presented through other words beauty lies within the person who is judging it means that beauty is not an objective object but beauty lies in the our beauty lies within the person beauty offers the opportunity to critic to put into it whatever one wishes it is the beauty that lies within artist so now after going through the work of art critic will certainly aid the same beauty that lies within his personality into the work of art right so while takes in these concepts and states that because it expresses nothing beauty offers the opportunity to create according to while a beauty has many meanings as man has moods so now see that you may not confine beauty only to the morals are uh, those people who are morally good they are beautiful why because they are the symbol of beauty no no you cannot uh, confine the uh, meaning of beauty uh, here uh, while suggest 